Yeah, I should have turned my microphone on before I started this video. Anyway, so this video is really just something I meant to, I'm meaning to do just for fun. Well, technically all my videos are kind of like guides meant to be just for fun. Nothing too serious. So basically just want to show off a few builds that I made. I don't know if anyone else has done these exact builds. I'm pretty sure they are probably already have. Usually because they want to create like their own version of Broly or Kefla. Or whoever else. I didn't really do that since I created my own my own female Saiyan Farah. Still level 99, but I decided to give her a Saiyan Berserk uh, based build. Basically, it's literally just any moves from Z Broly, S Broly, or Kefla. Seeing as how Kale isn't available in this game as an individual character, yet they're releasing Kalifa. I mean, I don't really care for those for those two even as their fusion form but I won't deny their moves are pretty awesome but anyways as far as this sort of quote unquote gigantic build yeah that's what I'm gonna call it gigantic build again it's just any moves from any of those characters it doesn't have to specifically say gigantic but you know if it comes from any of those type of sayings those moves being Blast the Ball, Fire for Barrage, or Small Key Blast, press the button repeatedly to use uh, to use key to keep firing. At first I thought that meant like you could you could throw more key blast that way. No, it's the same amount, I think like six total. And it just throws out the key blast faster. So it really just depends on the situation if you want to use it that way or not. Now there's also Power Shell. Oh, uh, first I forgot to say that Blaster Ball, this one comes from Z Broly, original Broly. This one comes from S Broly, Powered Shell, just a basic one key blast thrown at the opponent. What's cool is that if you're getting attacked, you can use this as an extra stamina break. Sure, it's 300, but the damage is still pretty good. In fact, almost all of S Broly's moves... Yet all of them that he has, if he uses them as a stamina break, if I remember they do more damage. So at least there's that if you want to use that. I also have Gigantic Omega, which it's weird that it's described or listed as a physical attack because it starts as one. You just charge in and, hit and try to hit your opponent. But regardless of if you ran into, run into your opponent or not, it still fires off a key blast. So this is like one of those weird hybrid moves where it starts off as one move but ends as another. So this one starts off as a physical attack but then ends as a projectile. I have yet to find any moves besides stamina breaks that can hold the opponent in place long enough to combo into a gigantic omega. At least with my Namekian or my female Saiyan. So I'm going to have to experiment with the others. And then gigantic rage. I went into detail about this move when talking about my Namekian grappler build. And it just works the same way as Blaster Ball. You can use it as a stamina break. It's a grab, slams your opponent about about five times. And man, is it satisfying. For gigantic attacks, at or ultimate gigantic attacks, I have gigantic burst. This one comes from Kefla. Fire three key waves and a forward sweeping attack while charging up key in both hands. Basically, it's just a big old spectacular, uh, or oh, it says spectacular in the description. I, I forgot about that. And then I have dual gigantic meteor, but that's for like if you're doing any sort of uh, either online or or regular parallel quest. Because the regular is a key blast, but the amount of time it takes just to fire off the actual attack. That's why it's burned off as a dual attack. Because your opponent's left in a state where they can't uh, they can't jump out of it. And you can't get hit out of it. And which one am I looking for? Oh yeah, Gigantic Roar. This is S Broly's move. Oh yeah, I forgot. I think I said it that this one, Gigantic Burst, is Kefla's attack. Then you have Gigantic Roar. Which it says be careful though because you can't guard. I mean technically you can't really guard during any of your supers. Like, oh, just about every super or every ultimate can be interrupted. It's just that depending on the move, 
the timing or the, or the window to be able to stamina break someone during a certain ultimate there, there leaves little to no room for some of them depending on how quick they are so that makes them especially dangerous in one-on-one -on -one battles the gigantic roar yeah it's one hit and it's not like a traditional beam since they don't fire it in a full like arc they don't fire it, like straight forward or down at the ground and then just move up it it goes a, it goes a bit of a distance but hmm how can I describe it I don't know but the what best the way to describe it is as something it's a key blast but you want to fire it up close or at like medium distance not really something you want to try firing full screen and of course I gave it to my saying girl far up because well, she is a Saiyan, and she does fight like a bit like a savage. A savage that's more geared towards key blasts. Oh, Let's check out some of these other custom builds I made. And a lot of these are just based on the lore I have for my characters. So for Farah, she's a bit of a native. Uh, not really primitive, but... Like, she's not exactly ignorant of modern-day technology, but she's not exactly... A tech whiz. <laughs> tech whiz. Whiz is such a weird word. Anyways. <laughs> uh, Isabel, I'm still working on her. Hey, right, here we go. Karis. My quote-unquote human turned Saiyan. Basically, him and a bunch of other humans got a hold of the Dragon Balls on Earth and made a wish to have the power of the Saiyans. That's why, orig that's why originally they were humans, but then they gained the power of the Saiyans. I figured that way, if they ever somehow were to introduce black people in Dragon Ball as having Saiyan powers, it could be something like that so people don't get all mad and try to claim that it's all woke and whatnot. Because it would make sense. There would, wouldn't, there would not be any reason why someone could not make a wish to gain the powers of someone. Like, that's what Zamasu did. He used the Super Dragon Balls to wish for the body of a Saiyan. Although, I don't know why he needs specifically the Super Dragon Balls. Wouldn't have any other Dragon Balls throughout the mortal realm just work fine? Eh, that's beside the point. So my favorite build with him is this sword style build. Uh, Shining Slash, Burning Slash, Rakshasa's Claw, Instant Service, Brave Sword Attack. Although Brave Sword Attack and Instant Service Servants do have a bit of uh, startup time, especially Brave Sword Attack has a lot of startup time. But hey, what you gonna do? It's a sword base build. That's all really there is to it. And I gave it Super Saiyan Blue just because the blue hair looks cool. As for for Crimson, my female Majin. Hmm. The only specific build that I have so far is the Zoni or Beam based Kamehameha based build. Base build. That's so weird. <laughs> Uh, Majin Kamehameha times 10, Bending, Kagehan times 4, Super Black Kamehameha. Super Black Kamehameha, it's an ultimate, but it's just like how I was describing ultimate, or not ultimate, Gigantic Omega. Is that it starts off as one type of move, but then it goes into another. So it starts off with a strike, a pun you punch the opponent away, but then it goes into the actual projectile. But just like Gigantic Omega, even if the initial strike misses or doesn't hit, the energy blast still comes out and the idea I had behind Crimson is that she is a Majin but the reason why she's a gray Majin not the, your typical pink Majin is that it's just like when Majin Buu when the pet dog that he adopted was alongside Hercule shot by some guy who was supposed to be some some wannabe assassin like, they both survived, but Majin Buu was just filled with so much anger that he, I think, unintentionally used the fission technique or fission to split himself or rid himself of all the evil and aggression in his heart. And thus, the gray Majin Buu or Majin Buu pure evil, whatever the official name for it is, he was born and... He had all the raw power. That's why he was able to defeat Majin Buu or Fat Buu in their fight. So that's where the idea behind a gray Majin like Crimson came from. Where they're extremely rare. 
as in there's like one there would be like one gray margin to every 20 or 30 pink margins but for the gray margins they're significantly physically stronger and have overall more raw power than the pink margins one problem is is that it's just like the difference between the warrior type and dragon clan namekians one's more geared one's more stronger and more powerful better suited for combat the other one has mystical abilities so that's what it is between the gray margins and the pink margins they're extremely rare they're hyper aggressive as all heck they're very strong they're raw key blast powers are ridiculously high a lot stronger than any pink margin but they don't have any of the magical or other mystical abilities that pink margins have so that's why crimson right here she has that constant resting bitch face it's not that she's angry or evil she is aggressive when fighting but she just has to try to hold back all that aggression so that's why she just has that uh, creepy look on her face and then Jason I just basically made this guy as a fictional version of me a self insert if you will and every build is a up close brawling type a kung fu master cuz why not and literally all these forms are just moves that use any move that is kung fu or looks like kung fu like soaring fist it's a projectile but that's the weird thing soaring fist is listed with the strike supers but you don't have to be up close to hit with it it goes full screen if I remember it goes full screen just like a projectile and basically it is a projectile you're just basically punching like from a long distance is essentially what it is a shockwave but they're still projectiles like there's a lot of moves in this game where either they're a combination of a sort of projectile and strike attack or it's listed among the strike attacks but it works more like a like a key blast or it's a listed it's listed among the key blast but works more like a striking attack so that that is kind of confusing somewhat but again the whole point behind this is that with Jason uh, the whole idea behind him is that the reason why he's so strong is he, well he just trained his ass off he he wasn't born with some genetic mutation or something that made him rare amongst his people he just trained his ass off to get where he is versus someone like Crimson or even Dilo who, whose main power comes from being born under different circumstances I'm still working on the lore for Dilo but basically with him is as I keep describing to some of my buddies like Flip he, Dilo is a warrior type uh, a mutated warrior type super Namekian thus that's why he has the black and red skin instead of the pink and green skin like a Namekian pupilless eyes and his eyes are kind of like velvet color sort of pinkish so that's why he just looks so different a definite exam example of being just built different <laughs> and I already showed off the grappling build with him I also have this. I remember one of my videos I talked about making a female Majin zoner that's all about beam attacks. Whereas with Dilo, he also has a bit of a um, zoning build, but this one's around energy, uh, individual energy blasts, so no, not really beams. Besides Gigantic Roar, that's like just that one's definitely made for damage. God Punisher, that one's good for like, even if your opponent punishes, or not punishes, even if your opponent is blocking, if you're playing like online, then someone can get behind the opponent while they're constantly blocking all the en all the energy balls from God Punisher and go for a, they can go for some kind of, what's the word, stamina break. Go for a stamina break or some move that, that can either do massive damage, something like that, since you can't block any moves from behind. So a good way of distracting the opponent, that's for sure. And Najax, I still don't have much lore for him. I'm still working on him. But definitely he's a mutation amongst his people, just like Frieza and his family. Also, I don't even call them the Frieza race because, well, 
it's not like the voice belongs to Frieza originated from him. I call them ice gens or frost gens. Kind of alternate between the two. Being how so many of them, even though none of them have ice powers, but their names are puns on words that involve cold or coldness. Of course, Najax is a completely original name I came up with. I'm going to copyright that one these days. So nobody take that name. Or I'm going to find you. <laughs> Anyways. So that's why he he's definitely unique among his race. He's an ice gen. But that, his name and his appearance is not really typical of one. Because again, he's himself is also a mutant. So that makes Crimson, Dilo, Najax. All three of them are mutants among their race. Then you have Karas. Where he was a human just like Jason, but then he made a wish for he made a wish with the Dragon Balls to have the powers of the Saiyans. Which is why So that way people be all like, but wait, how can a black man be able to go Super Saiyan? There ain't no black people in Dragon Ball who can go Super Saiyan. Well neither could Zamasu, but then he did by wishing for it with the super Dragon Balls instead of, you know, just wishing for all the immortals to be gone. I mean, seriously, if the Super Dragon Balls can be used to wish back all of the universes that were erased at the Tournament of Power, then surely using all of them to erase every mortal from across the multiverse, or at least just in his universe, that could have worked the same. Because wasn't it just Zamasu, or one Zamasu who used the, the Super Dragon Balls to wish for the body of a Saiyan? And the other Zamasu wished for immortality. So that's two wishes he could have made to make, fulfill his goals right away instead of all the other stuff. I mean, sure, it did get a Super Saiyan Rose, and it does look cool. And it's Fuse Zamasu, who looks cool, which basically makes it, which makes Super Saiyan look like, like a Super Saiyan Black, something like that. So some cool forms, and we got to have Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. But as far as like the overall plot and everything, it was just full of so many... Was, well, Dragon Ball has a lot of plot holes, but man, almost none as blatant or as obvious as as the Goku Black arc. That's like the only one I can think of where a lot of the plot holes comes from the incompetence of the villain themselves. Also, I just realized there's a lot of moves in this game, a lot of super attacks that have the words death in it. And yet there's few that I remember in the in the anime or in the manga that's ever actually been used to kill or managed to kill someone. Except for like when the Frieza used the double death slicer attack on Goku during their fight on Namek and he got hit with it himself and de basically decapitated himself. I'm like, man. This is why if you're going to use some kind of attack like the Death Slicer or Destructo Disc, you should really just, you should really try making sure you're immune to your own attack. Or just watch what the heck you're doing. Make sure if your attack fails, somehow the projectile, I don't know, just phases out or whatever so it's not just constantly flying all over the place. Yeah, it's still working on my female human. Or... Isabel. Basically, she looks like a human, but she's not, but she's not a Saiyan. Like I said, I'm still working on her. And I already talked a little bit about Farah. She's a time patroller, but again, she's... She wasn't actually born on planet Vegeta. Her parents moved to another planet, settled there. And that planet being full of natives who dress similar to how Farah is dressed. So that's why she doesn't wear that much clothing. Like the whole primate or or monkey motive is definitely much more prominent with her than my other saying Karis. Monkey suit just looks cool on her. What sucks is that the the regular grade ape costume piece from what I've seen is about seventy TP medals each. And I'm like, why? Why does the why does the grade ape suit have to be seventy TP medals each? Of course, my buddy Flip said it changes almost oh, every week. Because I was, I was saying, that better be the case. Because I remember the last time I looked this up, it was 30 DP medals. 
How the heck does it go from 30 to 70? How do you bump it up a whole 40 TP medals? No shot to buy that much, just be able to dress up like a dang monkey. Might as well have someone pay that day much so they can dress up and look like Godzilla in this dang game. That's for sure. And Gold Monkey. Like Goku and, and Super Baby Vegeta. Only it looks car cooler on Farah. And man, you would not believe the amount of trouble you gotta go through just to get the Pride Trooper uniform. It's that one patrol quest you have to do where at first you're helping. What the heck was that loser's name? Oh yeah, Debura, Demon King Debura. You gotta fight alongside him, beat up a whole bunch of the Z fighters. Then he turns traitor on you. You gotta fight him. And once you do, then that's if if you manage to uh, I don't know, get the conditions, fight him again alongside Majin Buu or Kid Buu with with that super villain mode. Seriously, super villain. For someone like Yamcha, that name makes sense because, yeah, Yamcha isn't really a bad guy. Too bad it doesn't appear in story mode. But for someone like Frieza, it's like, Frieza's already a super villain. Same thing with Cooler. Hey, when does Cooler get to make it into the series in an official canon? Let him show up and go golden. Bet you the golden form look a lot cooler on him anyway. Yeah, Cell has, if I remember, Cell has a supervillain mode, but I haven't locked it yet. Why have none of the androids get to have a supervillain mode? Same thing with Super Boo. Only Kid Boo has a supervillain mode. I haven't unlocked it yet. And Broly. Like, these guys are all already supervillains. You couldn't come up with a better name? That's just like when they wrote Dragon Ball Resurrection F and decided to call it... What, why, why would they call it Go, uh, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan? Why not just Super Saiyan God 2 or Super Saiyan Blue? Like so many people already call it Super Saiyan Blue. Why can't that be the official canon name? Yeah, on every marketed material, it's listed as Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. And I'm like, just, just stop that. Just call it Super Saiyan Blue. No need to be writing such a handful or mouthful. You know what I mean. Speaking of which, I'm hungry. I should go out for a walk. <laughs> That's one of the weird things about this game. There's so many people in, around the lobbies just running around, but yet their version or their characters are just basically their own fan made version of existing characters. Warning Malwo XV. Yeah. See if I can find anyone who's like that, who are just basically uh, yet another Goku or Vegeta running around. I haven't found any yet so far. That is uh, pretty interesting. Seriously, because I've been seeing so many Gokus and Vegetas. I'm going to dress up as a monkey. Dang it! Oh, I screwed up on there. <laughs> Man, the number of times that actually ends up happening. I don't know why I keep doing that. You know, I completely forgot what the whole point of this video was. I guess this is just for me to show off some of the builds I have and finally get to talk about the lore behind my characters. Oh, if I'm like I find remember the name of that YouTuber, because I remember there was a YouTuber who did who did a similar thing. Like, or of course, for me, I've been coming up with the lore and ideas behind my characters, but it was it was this particular YouTuber who inspired me to basically uh, have a different approach as to how I give my char spend my characters attribute points. Like, for instance, I made my Namekian, I made both my Namekian and my Male Earthling, Jason and Dilo, so I made them all about fighting up close and personal. Put I put no points towards Ki Blast, but definitely towards stamina, health, and basic attacks for him or for Dilo. Whereas for Jason, he was been, he's meant to be kind of balanced, more so towards rush down, but he can't throw a few Ki Blasts. I am actually kind of surprised. I don't see any other 
Gokus or Gohans running over the place. Then again, there's not a lot of people here in this place. And let me go in as another character. What I should do is make another video that I want, now a buddy of mine had requested and talk about, because there's some combos definitely that I know about as far as being able to break people's stamina. And I'm thinking maybe, maybe I could probably do something like that. Because I see people where they do all these different types of combos. Like how there's various combos into stamina breaks, but don't really go into detail. Ah, that's some good water. Shinron. Man, I need to hurry and get the Dragon Balls and make a wish with Dilo so I can finally get uh, Omega Shinron. I only have Omega Shinron's super villain version. Gotta hurry up and get the. Hey, is this the sa same, uh, the same Kanton City I was in earlier? MUI Goken. <laughs> Imagine if Goku had a yet another child. Go where? No, go away. If they had another child, first Gohan, then Goten, now Goken. Or if maybe like. Goku and Goten somehow managed to fuse and they became Goten or Goken. You know what I mean? How the hell did I put this crazy dress on her like that? I don't know why, but there's just something about creatures with yellow eyes that just creeps me out. That's why I gave Crimson yellow eyes. Cause it's creepy and she has that resting bitch face and also there's a voice clip that they have available in the game where literally everything your character says just sounds so uninspired like they just do not give a damn at least with the female voices I don't know if there's a male voice counterpart you know what I mean that sounds like that where again they just sound bored and they just sound almost so lifeless. For every attack she does, she just makes it sound like she's just doing the bare minimum. Like when you hire a voice actor, actor, actress, whatever, and they're just saying the line, but they're not putting any life into that line. What's one here that best shows that off? Let me see. Hey, where's the, here it is. Defender of justice. He will be worth great say a man. <laughs> See, just like that. Did not sound inspired or sound like she cared. At all. I guess I won. It's unfortunate how it's only when you're in Kanton City and you do these emojis that these characters actually talk. That's something they should do for Xenoverse 3. That's one thing me and Flip are talking about constantly. Stuff they could do to improve on if they ever decide to make it Xenoverse 3. Like for instance, your character actually gets to talk during story mode. What the heck? Like not only do they talk, and it doesn't have to be anything complex. Like every, like every character between your male and female Majin Saints and Earthlings and your Namekians and Ice Jins. But for one thing, stop calling them Frieza's race. Just give it an actual name, like Frost Jin or Ice Jin. And for another thing, for every character, again, it doesn't have to be too specific, like whatever voice clip you give them. Just be that if your character is male or female, then when they talk, it's it's the same line. They like whatever line you would give a female Majin would be the same for the female Earthling and the female Saiyan. Same thing with the male Majin Earthling. 
and Saiyan, Namekian, and Ice Gen. Give them all the same lines. Or actually, no, not the same lines, but depending on the species. I don't know how the hell to really describe this. Yeah, actually, so depending on both your character's race and their gender, the lines they say, it doesn't have to be like a big old paragraph or a sentence. It could be maybe a short answer, a simple yes, no, maybe they sound trusting or untrusting when they talk to any characters. Some voice lines where they just sound very oddly sarcastic. Like for instance, if you're playing as a female Majin, maybe they're, maybe the way they talk could sound, maybe not outright hostile, but definitely a bit more aggressive compared, compared to an earthling, but not as aggressive and definitely not as hostile as a female Saiyan and have like the male earthling have him and the female earthling be like the more neutral where they try to sound professional or whatnot something like that man all these different ideas just based on voice acting alone that they can give in this game you know i should probably give my image a different color nah Also for maybe for Z University, another thing they can do is kind of branching story paths. Give your character the choice between becoming good or, or, or at least they start off working with the good guys, but then over time they can become evil or neutral. So that way they're not always stuck being one of the good guys or one of the bad or they, they don't always have to be the bad guy. It can kind of go go back and forth, or you could just have to just choose one one allegiance and stay with it for the rest of the game. Anything just to give it more variety, and it could definitely stand to improve upon the AI, like immensely. Wait, how would they do that? Yeah, they can approve upon the AI by... For, for instance, whenever you defeat an enemy and a new and a new opponent comes in, it's annoying how there's always that animation or cutscene you have to watch of that new enemy just flying in from wherever. Or it could be an enemy you already defeated, but they're getting off the ground. It's so annoying having to watch that every time. Especially when it's one... It's just one fallen or defeated opponent getting back up after another and you try to do something like some kind of combo that uses up a lot of key or even during dual supers it sucks when you finally land get ready to land a dual super and then the animation gets excuse me the animation gets interrupted by some fallen opponent getting back up or some new guy coming in or the person you're currently fighting deciding to transform in the middle of the fight like just stop with all these cutscenes or intermissions that keep interrupting the battle just have the enemy get up or transform or fly in and just let us know there's a new enemy in the area but stop interrupting whatever it is we're already doing because the number of times me and flip played together and we'd have those same sort of animations and interruptions just interrupted when we're doing dual supers it's like we do this big old combo landed into it only to get interrupted because the game wants to be a jerk about it and it is no fun. It is no fun at all. Hey, what time is it? 9.22. I should go out for a walk. Especially after that good old dinner. I wonder if I should stop making this habit of eating so much food during my streams when recording videos. Because definitely it's like uh, I run the risk of getting into a food coma or just falling asleep after eating so much food. Especially after eating weirder, Wiener Snitchel just now. Wiener Snitchel. Is it Snitchel or, or Snitchel? Snizzle? However the heck they pronounce that word. What is it? What is that supposed to be like? German or something? Anyways, they're chili dogs and chili fries. Maybe not the best french fries, but the chili cheese they put on their stuff. 
Man, is it good. Especially when he has the good to drink. Man, I should start eating more fish. Wait, what am I ranting about? Anyways, oh man, please don't tell me someone's not gonna join. Come on. I'm gonna go fight Super 17. That's yeah, screw it. This video's been nothing but me just ranting on about random stuff. Like specific builds that I just wanted to show off that I made with some characters. The lore I have behind my characters. And... Just other bunch of random stuff I've been talk I just talked about for a little bit. Like a few things they can do to improve upon for Xenoverse 3 if we ever get that. Or the future update for this game if they only want to focus on Xenoverse 2 for as long as possible. Oh yeah, that is another thing they can improve upon. Either in an update for this game or in a sequel. The clothing options. Give us a bigger variety of clothing options. Not just individual clothing pieces for your character's specific race and gender for that race. But for official costumes that characters from the actual series have worn. Let us be able to color those. Like it makes no sense that I can put a put Super 17's clothes on my female Majin Crimson. But yeah, I can't color it. Just because it's an actual official piece of clothing that someone wore. Like, that's stupid. I should not be restricted like that. Like, let me color this. Please, let me just color it. Eh, what can you do? There's always these ideas that a lot of fans come up with. And the company's all like, hey, let's not go with that idea just to piss off somebody. I bet you that's probably what they were thinking. <laughs> okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, yeah, yeah, they can give us more individual costume pieces. Unique costume pieces that aren't actual lore specific. Just something for our characters to wear. And even if they do decide to wear something that was actually worn by someone in the original series... Give us the option to color said pieces. Don't restrict it to just the coloring of whatever character in the series actually wore. Like this top that I have that baby wore. Let me be able to color the gold pieces red, the black pieces pink or or crimson. I mean crimson. Crimson. Dang it. And also the hair pieces. The hair exists... Well, I don't mean just these accessories, but I mean like the hair options you can actually give your characters. Like this hair option I have for Crimson. Well, just about all the hair pieces that you have for the Majins are unique. Majins, Namekians, and Ice Gens. Yeah, they have some pretty unique stuff. But as far as the Sands and the Earthlings, male and female sides... Damn near every hairstyle in the game was a hairstyle already officially worn by someone from the series. Like, no, I don't want my character to have hair like freaking Gohan or or Krillin when he, whenever he does randomly decide to grow his hair out. And I, nor do I want my, nor do I want my female to be forced to have only hair options, like the. 550 different hairstyles Boma will be wearing throughout the series. Or well, the one or two hairstyles that Chi Chi has her hair in. If someone wants to have their hair designed like that, or have their character with hair like Chi Chi or Boma or whoever else actually appear in the series, by all means, hey, I ain't tripping. Go ahead. But for the unique hair pieces, just just give us more options. Don't limit us like this. Oh, no gifts. Like, yeah, it's fun to mix and match different clothing items or see your character dressed like someone from the actual series dressed at one point. 
but again, just give us more specific customization options. Like for instance, let me be able to have Crimson dressed in this top that's unique to the female Majin. Well, it's also you. Oh, the male Majin has it too. Never mind. Anyways, for the Majins, this Dino Woogie, what the heck is the name like that? Dino Woo? Anyways, let us be able to have them wear something like this, but let us be able to remove the scarf. I shouldn't have to have the scarf or the dang cape if I don't want it to. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I realize like this game was, it was very, it's still very fun. You know, even after all this time of playing, it's still very fun. But man, does it feel like this game goes out of its way to limit what you can and can't do. As far as cooling options. Which, I don't get why they would do that. And why it is that people who play this game for fun, they have to go through the trouble of modding it just to be able to give people the options to do certain designs or even certain combat styles in this game. Maybe another thing they can improve upon for Xenoverse 3. Give characters some the option of choosing a, a few of their unique moves. Like maybe depending on if you pick like when you when you first make your character and it and it acts your character's fighting style uh fight up close and personal or staying at distance or a little bit of both maybe that can affect the way they fight so that'd be like three different fighting styles for all races and the divisions in those races like for instance if your character is the kind what the hell am I doing if your character is the kind that fights up close and personal they have longer combos and have a bit of it, maybe a bit, nah, uh, the ability to combo into stamina breaks sh should not be based on that, like how easy it is to combo into stamina breaks. Make it just as easy or as difficult, however, so make that kind of fair, combo into stamina breaks. But anyways, if your character is the kind who prefers to fight up close and personal, then then their combos will be a bit longer. They'll have more hits. More hits, more strikes within those combos. Longer combos. Whereas... Oh yeah, also in addition to having longer combos, it doesn't build as much key, uh, as much key from those combos. But then for someone who prefers to stay at a distance, have them f have shorter combos, but those shorter combos build up key so much faster. So you have someone who, f who prefers to fight up close, then they have longer combos, but those longer combos you will be able to only build like a total of one and a half key bars. They have someone who prefers to keep it at a distance, so their combos would be able to, while they're shorter, but then those few hits they get from that short combo can go up to three or four key bars okay maybe four is a bit much definitely two and a half two and a half or three and then obviously as far as someone wanted to keep it balanced it's somewhere in between so definitely more than someone who prefers to fight entirely up close but not as much as someone who fight, prefers to fight at a distance And yeah, if someone prefers to fight up close to personal, strike-based attacks do more damage versus key-based attacks, which don't do as much damage. And vice versa. Hey, there. hey, what do you have to offer? Twenty missions? Dang it, I only did twelve! So that's like what another twelve? To get, no, not another twelve. That's about it is eight. Yeah, I was close. Like, can you imagine how cool that would be? Where if you choose up close and personal, then 
than for the male earthling. Like, because the male and female earthlings, their fighting styles in this game are obviously based on kung fu. So if they choose to fight up close to their personal, then definitely it's more kung fu. But if they prefer to keep it balanced, it'd be like some kind of free form martial arts. But not specifically just kung fu. And if they fight, they prefer to fight at a distance. Then it could be something like boxing. But some of their, their attacks, like their heavy strikes, throw out key blasts. Or energy beams that don't do a lot of damage, but they still keep your opponent uh, away. I wonder how that will work in online matches. Also, one thing I find interesting is how, uh, how each race is divided. This guy again? Fine, I'll fight you. You better not bug me again after this. <laughs> but anyways, as far as base attributes, when you first start off your character, how apparently the female saying is at the highest or among the highest as far as their universal or, or their overall attribute points. And I'm, I don't know why, but for some reason, just based on what I've seen in Dragon Ball lore and everything, I, I kept expecting, I was ex I was watching a video some guy did, I wish I could remember that YouTuber's name, because I was already talking about him earlier, about how he inspired me to spend my character's attribute points differently. Actually, I'm going to look him up right now. Hey, is that Space Jam? Yep. Uh, let me see if I can find him real quick. <laughs> Dang, the Mickey's. Female Majins don't have what the heck kind of key is that man? How come the female Majins don't have more? Well, it's not just the male female Majins, but they're making us too. I've seen they only have like uh, mostly punches that evolve them stretching their limbs, but you don't really see any combos that involves them like stretching their legs when kicking. Oh, come on, I totally hit the guy. Oh, screw you. She's got an Android 16 thing going on here, man. Ah, dang it. Dang it! This is why the Mickey is the best throw game, like at all. Just that distance. <laughs> okay, that wasn't too bad. I don't really play online too much, so I don't really care about losing. Anyways, so that YouTuber I was talking about earlier, I don't know how to pronounce the first word, but the second word ends with Rex. It's A X O N I U S Exonius. Yeah, Exonius Rex. Exonius Rex. That's the guy who has. It's not just a Namekian build. He did. He did it for all the races, not just showing off different builds. 
I, it, it's a guide? Okay, one more, but this time I'll use my, I'll use Dilo. So it's not just a guide for each race, but each video he does based on those different builds for each individual race or for each individual character type. It also so serves as a way for him to explain the lore of his own characters. I need a better build for this for my Become a Giant build. So yeah, like I said, this is the guy who inspired me to make a... to try to redistribute my character's attribute points, especially with Dilo, make Dilo just all about uh, strike attacks up close, not really to stay at a distance. Definitely give Exonius Rex a check. Uh, check out his stuff, especially his Xenoverse 2 uh, character builds. Because even if you're not really interested in the builds he has, he not only does not only has he built a lore for each of his characters, but he's even made a full-on story for them, like a straight-up roleplay sort of thing. <laughs> Man, this is why I don't really get playing online. All this stuff I'm doing trying to hit this guy. Like, he has an easy time hitting me. But yeah, I throw... What the heck? Anytime I throw an attack out at him... I just randomly miss. Who are your curly mustache shit? Come on, man. Let's have a giant Namekian battle. Come on. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> My stamina went down way too fast. Hey, that is kind of cool. I, I did not realize that until now. Apparently, when going giant, that you don't take damage, or you don't take uh, your health doesn't take any damage, but your stamina does when you're in giant form. Which sucks because you're you're in your giant form. You're already losing stamina rapidly just from being in giant form, like when you go Kaioken. But on top of that, your stamina also takes damage upon getting hit. Oh, please don't tell me he's one of those guys. I should do like what Flip does and just have my invite set to automatically decline. I wonder if this is what Flip was talking about. People just constantly sending him one invite after another, inviting him to matches and whatnot. Because if that, if this is what he was talking about, then I can see why it's so dang annoying. Because it is. It's just like with DC Online, you're, you just want to do your own thing, but a person won't stop harassing you and sending you one invite after another. It's like, you already beat me once. How many times do you keep needing to fight me? Or even if I won the last however many fights. Or even it was back and forth. Like, just leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Ooh, that's some good water. Man, I should really hurry. Up. I should finish this video and go out for a walk. Guess all I can say is I just literally just made this video because I'm bored. I was bored. I was like, what if I just made a video just randomly talking about Xenoverse 2? I probably do that for other videos, where it's just me just randomly talking about stuff, nothing specific, just talking about stuff. I watch it, like throughout this whole this whole match is nothing but BS because I'm barely able to get any hit hits in. Like how is this guy vanishing all over the place? And yet, I, oh, are you kidding me?
Okay, that actually made it sound like it hit. So how did that not hit? Yo, what was that move? That was cool. You know, as far as um, I already described uh, Dino, the reason why he's so powerful is because, again, he's a. Oh, come on. He had that move too, you freaking jackrabbit. Because he's a mutated warrior type Super Namekian. But a part of me is wondering should I make it where not only he's that, but part of the mutated warrior type Super Namekian? I already described that. It means that not only does he have more raw power than the average Namekian. Like complain all you want, but in my in my lore, Dilo is easily much much stronger and more powerful than even Piccolo. Even after Piccolo had absorbed Kami, or not absorbed, but fused with Nail and Kami. So definitely more powerful than Piccolo in, in his current state. How am I missing? This is annoying. Ah, oh, man. Okay, I had enough fighting this guy. But anyways, Dilo, not only is he... Maybe he's not, like, he's not really that fast, but definitely his strength is much higher than the likes of Pick Base Form, Vegeta, and Goku, and Piccolo, and all of them. Like, he can handle a Super Saiyan 3. Like that's where his power is most... That's where his power is at. He's equal to, if not slightly greater, than Super Saiyan 3. Anything above, that definitely gives him trouble. But that's still extremely powerful. Even more powerful than what uh, Piccolo's capable of handling. And damn near every other character who isn't Goku or Vegeta. Or a deity of some sort. Unfortunately. Hey, another cool thing they could add as far as customizations for your races is being able to make your character an android. Actually, I don't know how that would work. Since androids do look a lot like humans, if you don't stop trying to fight me, man. Watch, he's going to try to send me another freaking invite. Actually, I don't know how that would work. Maybe it could be like the Tenkai Chi games where your character, uh, your character's key gauge just fills up automatically. Stop that. Your character's key gauge fills up automatically, but they can't really charge. Yeah, just like in, in Tenkai Chi 1, 2, and 3, your character, or well, it was just 2 and 3. Tenkai Chi 1, they could charge up their own key. But two in Tenkai Chi 2 and 3, your, char your, your character, if they were an android, then their key gauge would re refill on their own automatically. So they couldn't charge. They'd have to gauge to fill on its own. But they definitely were capable of doing some good damage. So they didn't have to worry about standing there and charging on their own. Except for when their key gauge is full and they're charging into the blue area. Like anyone who's played the Tenkai Chi games on the PS2 know exactly what I'm talking about. So they come up and do something like that. For Xenoverse 3, your character is an android, but I don't know, but they're made of some kind of material that makes them tougher than any other previous android before them. But again, they can't charge their own key, they have to wait for it to fill up on its own, but it does fill up pretty quickly. But maybe like the the equalizer could be that any individual key attacks, especially key supers, don't do that much damage. I don't know. It could be something like that. Seriously, what was the point of me making this video besides just me ranting about random stuff? Boy, if you don't... <sighs> Where's the option to decline, automatically decline invites? Hey, I got Max, uh, partner with, uh, Yamcha.
Join settings decline. 